Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to install and use the Mailbird client with a Gmail account. So the Mailbird client is an uh, email client you could download online and install. Um, they have a free version, but it's uh, limited compared to the pay for version. So, but if you're just going to use one account and just need the basics, then it might be okay for you. And they also give you a free trial of the business professional version for three days, I think it is, once you install it. So let's go ahead and download it and install it and see how it works. So we're at the Mailbird website here. Try Mailbird free. Okay, download the installer. So we're just going to click on that. And yes. Accept the agreement. Decide your installation folder. If you want to just keep the default, just click on Install Mailbird. Now it's going to download the setup and install it. Okay, so installation was successful. So if you want to try out the uh, business account, you could sign up for it here, but we're not going to do that. So we're just going to get out of this. And we'll get out of this, minimize this. Okay, so now we have this thing here. So if you want to use it for your default mail client, you can leave that checked. I'm going to say no because I have other stuff on here I use. Uh, shortcut on the desktop is fine. Taskbar, if you want to have it pinned, well, that's fine too. We'll just say no to that. We'll start Mailbird. Okay, now it's going to want to send you tips and stuff. We're going to say no to that. Okay, so now we have this test email account from Gmail. We're going to set up with this client here and see how it works. So this will be your display name that will show up on your emails when you send them out. And then, of course, this is your Gmail address. So continue. Okay, so found the Gmail uh, server settings. So you could actually edit them if you have something different than the default IMAP and SN SMTP settings that uh, Gmail uses. Okay. So continue. Okay, so now it's going to open the uh, Google page here with your account, and you're going to have to give this uh, Google account access to Mailbird so it could read and compose emails, look at your calendar, and so on. So we just say allow, and you have to be you know logged in with that Google account. Otherwise, you're going to have to be prompted to log in. So this one's already logged in as Cindy. Okay, now we could close this browser and return to Mailbird. Okay, so if you want to do uh, customize your layout, reading pane or not with the reading pane, you can see the sample right there. I like to use the reading pane so you don't have to open up each one individually. Continue. Okay, now we could connect some other apps. So we already have calendar contacts uh, connected along with the email. So if you use any of this other stuff, let's see, Instagram account. So we'll do this, the Google Calendar. So there's the Mailbird Calendar, and there's also the Google Calendar. Google Docs, we'll put that. You do Sheets and Slides and all the other good stuff. So you want to connect your Google Drive if you want to be able to access your files from there, if you use Google Drive. And Okay, we'll leave it like that. Click Continue. Start using Mailbird. So this is where you get the uh, trial. Otherwise, you can enter the license key if you paid for it. So that you get three days unlimited access. Then after that, it'll be restricted as to what you could do with it. So we'll click on Start Trial. Okay, it tells you the trial is going to expire in two days. So that's good. Okay, so now we have the uh, email here. And over here, you have your little tools. So like you want to see your start emails that you have an email. So let me have, I have the email account open here. So if I go to here, I have these two start emails from Todd, which matches up with here and the inbox matches up with here too but one thing you'll notice so in gmail you have you know your categories here so let's say uh, windows 11 feedbacks under promotions and then we have the feedback right here it's all it's all grouped the same so mailbird's not going to um, have these separate categories that you have in gmail so and of course you don't have to have these in Gmail. You could turn these off as well from the settings and then so everything goes into primary. Okay, so going back to Mailbird. Uh, so, you know, just click the mail here. And if we want to have our Google Docs, or actually our draft, sorry. 
sent items, call email. You can see your folders. So if you have any, they're called labels in Gmail. So if you made labels, family and sales, family and sales, and then Google Docs. So once you open this Google Docs, you're going to have to sign in with the same email account here, or Gmail account, I should say. Okay, so that takes you to your uh, Google Docs right from uh, Mailbird. So we've got a new email right there. And then same with your calendar. Just close that out. So we have right there. And if I go to my Google Calendar and the website here, we've got the sales meeting and Todd's birthday. And that matches up with there too. And you have your same uh, calendars you could choose from there. Contacts. Don't have any contacts with this account, so this should match up the same that I have here. Yeah, so no contacts, so otherwise they would match up here. Calendar again, I don't know why it's showing there twice. And the main Google Drive, so this different, you know, the Google Docs will show your docs, and uh, Google Drive will show all your files that you have in Google Drive, so have these Files here, two folders, and this all matches up with there. So, once again, you know, pretty simple to use, and it's kind of cool because you can have all your Google stuff in one place. And like I said, if you use the pro version, I think it's like 39 bucks a year, you could have multiple accounts that you could connect to the same client here. So, once again, just go to the uh, Mailbird website. I'll put a link in the description. Download it. Uh, sign in with your Google account, you know, to give it permission. And then you could decide which apps you want to tie into it, like the calendar and contacts and drive and all that other good stuff. And then you could start using it. So it's a pretty cool program. It does a lot. And you might want to actually uh, do the uh, pay-for version if you want to get all the features. All right. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.